is 5.30. I will call the meetings of Public Works to order. Uh, I'll start with roll call. Alderperson Salazar. Here. Alderperson mm -hmm. Ramey. Here. Alderperson Ross. Present. Alderperson Heidman. Here. And Alderperson Decker is here. So we will start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I guess we'll start out with a quick introduction. I think we just this is general making. Um, I'm old person Dean Decker, chair of the committee from uh, District 6. Uh, Alder Andrew Heidemann, 10th District, South Side. Alder Zach Russ, District 8, Vice Chair. Alder Angela Ramey, uh, District 5. Uh, Alder Diana Salazar, District 3. Liz Majerus, Legal. Uh, for and Louis Bow, uh, just here with. I guess you're going to active transportation, just listening. Okay. Steve Jorgensen, interested citizen. Okay. Joel Coles, DPW. Mike Gorms, DPW. Joe Curlin, DPW. Jordan Skip, DPW. Stacy Wesseljack, DPW. Heather Burke, DPW. David Beeble, Public Works Department. <laughs> change it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ryan, I'm with the city. <laughs> Just a phone. Alrighty. We'll go to number five approval of minutes from uh, November 14th, 2023. I moved to approve the minutes. Second. Should be the second. Any uh, discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Okay. Number six. General Ordinance number 29-23-24, Ordinance amending sections 54-397, 54-398, 54-399 of the Municipal Code relating to sewers and sewerage disposals as to make changes to service charges. Director or Jordan. Well, <laughs> we're going to defer to Jordan, but as the budget was passed, as part of that, now we have to set the rates. Since the budget's been established, that helps then Jordan in the waste treatment plan set the rates, and that's what's before you. And I can let Jordan uh, dive into the details of that. Okay. okay. Thank you. And uh, I think many of you have seen this uh, annually before, where toward the end of the year we review um, where expenses have come in from this past year, what the budget looks like for next year, and then pretty complex rate tool that Donahue Associates helped put together several years ago, basically used to advise us on whether certain rates within our structure need to be updated. Um, this year there is uh, recommended a small rate increase for volume, I'm sorry, for fixed, which basically means $2 a quarter for, your, um, for every customer. So that's just a 4% increase there. Um, going from 50 to 52. We're also looking at a little more significant increases for specifically for industries or communities that um, have a higher than average concentration of phosphorus. That's going up about 6.2%. And then also um, volume rates. Uh, so basically the amount of volume that we get from the outlying communities, Sheboygan Falls, Kohler, uh, Town of Wilson, Town of Sheboygan, um, their volume rates would also go up about 6%. Um, basically, this rate tool takes a look at what our expenses are in these different categories, how much volume, how much what we call loading or strength is coming from these various industries or communities, and then calculates whether our, our past rates are, are sufficient for moving forward and, and fair. And so um, it's a good tool, it's very complex, um, but I'd be happy to just sit down with somebody and show them what I've learned of it so far, although there are mysteries that remain in there for as well. But for the most part, those are the biggest changes for uh, proposed for 2024. Also, we are adding uh, a separate hauled in waste category. In the past, we've had holding tank waste and septic waste at a relatively low price. And what we were finding is that when porta potties are brought in and that waste is dumped, it is much stronger than those other wastes. And so what we were charging was not adequate to cover our treatment costs. And so we've created a new category 
and um, that's significantly higher price than, than what those other two existing categories are. But for the most part, um, I think that the rates are, are fair. Um, we've tried to keep them as, as low as we can. Um, we've also communicated these um, proposals to um, the haulers and to the town of Wilson and town of Sheboygan specifically were asking about them. And we really have heard um, significant concern. I think everybody recognizes that, um, you know, costs just tend to go up, so. Yeah. So how will this affect our, the constituents? So our average city resident will yeah. see about a 2% increase. And that's only based on that fixed fee, that $2. Roughly like? It, it will be $8. A year. Eight dollars a year. Two dollars a quarter. Okay. Yep. Uh, some of the industries within the city might see their prices go up some more because of that phosphorus component. But again, that depends on whether it's an industry that has high phosphorus in their in their waste water. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, the outlying areas, Sheboygan Falls, Town of Wilson, uh, if they've already established their budget as to what they thought the fee was going to be, is that when they come back to us and say, "Hey, we didn't budget for that." Or, or they automatically just they just say okay, well they kind of have the service, mm -hmm. so it's not like they're going to shut us off. I, I don't know what their inner workings are. I do know that I did bounce these numbers off of again Wilson Sheboygan, uh, Town of Sheboygan about a month ago, and so our hope was that they would have at least that picture in mind before some of their budget decisions had to be made. And again, I didn't hear any significant concerns. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, that is definitely a concern. Um, my understanding is that, uh, especially the town of Sheboygan was also facing significant increases already. So okay. they might've accounted for some of this yeah. going up as You well. hope they prepare. That, right, yeah. exactly. Um, how, how do you account for um, the, um, like the phosphorus is in, in like, in like say Sheboygan Falls, like their industries in that area, or, or, or there's just bulk and that's what it is. It's bulk. Um, essentially what we do is the waste that we get from those communities are all come in one pipe. And so they're sampled and metered together. So we, as the city of Sheboygan, don't know what's coming from industry, what's coming from the households in the community. We just know here's what Sheboygan Falls is sending us. Here's their bill based on that. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Yes, I'm looking for a motion then. I move to adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay, number seven, resolution number 104, 2324, resolution authorizing staff to file a claim in the multi district litigation settlement of Aquas Film Forming Product Liability Litigation, District Court for the District of South Carolina, Master Docket Number. 218-MN-2873-RMG. Dash dash Alder Decker, you passed the test. Mm -hmm. We made that as difficult as <laughs> 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 so it was. Like, say five times fast. <laughs> I was like, who's taking this one? <laughs> I will. Um, we are asking that uh, staff be authorized to file a claim in the 3M DuPont PFOS litigation. There is a class action lawsuit uh, that has reached settlement stage. Um, we believe that we may be eligible for some money out of this lawsuit, but because of our testing results, which have been very, very low, thankfully, we think our payout will be on the smaller side of things. Uh, we won't know for sure what our uh, payout would be until we would file that claim and work with the claims administrator. But they've provided councils with or city attorneys with a table that says the the payout may be anywhere from to nine million, depending on the flow rate and how much PFAS is detected. Uh, we pull our water from Lake Michigan, and we test it regularly. Um, we have had two historical tests that have had some presence, but it has been very small, below any thresholds for, um, by the state or the federal government. And our most recent test result was, was negative. So we're, we're thankful for that. Mm -hmm. um, but we do want, staff does support getting into this litigation to receive some money that we can use to 
um, improve our filtration systems if PFAS increases in the lake. Uh, by signing on to this, we would be releasing 3M and DuPont from further liability. Um, that goes along with any class action lawsuit, right? Mm -hmm. You agree to take a certain amount, a certain payout in exchange for now for more. Um, there is a concern that um, this happened with the opioid litigation a year or two ago. The state government set a limit if your municipality hadn't opted into the class action lawsuit by a certain deadline, the state preempted cities from signing on. So um, we learned from that and uh, have decided that the sit back and watch approach is maybe not in the city's best interest. So if we can get this money for better filtration systems, we'd like to take advantage of that. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions? Zach? Would would this resolution state that all the money we would get would go towards filtration systems? Um, there are terms within the, the settlement that say how the money can be spent. All right, thank you. Anything else? Any other questions? I think this is, you know, we, uh, our, uh, our, our, our concern. I mean, in the water reason we've been reading more and more about it, we've been talking about it. Well, conference when we were in uh, Green Bay, and um, I think that anything we can do to, 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 to minimize any chances of us having problems in the future, I think, is is imprudent for us. So, I guess I would just... Just a quick, Liz, is, is this only for water supply systems? Yes. Okay. So, Jordan, I guess, you know, for wastewater, we'll have to pursue... That's why he's jacking up rates. <laughs> <laughs> well, because... Yeah. The wastewater does get, not all of the water necessarily is derived from Lake Michigan mm -hmm. because we some of the communities we serve have well water and they may have higher concentrations that Jordan may have versus Earth. And certainly many of the industries in Sheboygan sure. may generate some and, and this is, wastewater tends to be kind of a, the main focus right now is drinking water and sure. probably that's where it should be but but wastewater will be a consideration both with the biosolids that we generate as well as the water that gets put back into lake michigan our current treatment does not really address pfos at all um, there's a pretty significant concern on the wastewater side down the road that the dnr the state the epa will look to water treatment plants to handle it even sure. though we're not the generator of it pretty big concern and so that's an excellent question just because we would like to know that if there is uh, some sort of settlement in the future with the wastewater side that this doesn't you know tie our hands in that way sure and i'll make a note in my litigation memo to, to the city attorney that that's something that we should stay on top of and follow up as needed i have a question but probably isn't someone here to answer um and that would be do, do we uh, um, do we have any of the, of the firefighting foam in stock in our like in our in our fire department? And is there is, is this is this could this be is there something about disposal of that because that's one of the biggest contributors of PFAS in the area is the firefighting foam. Locally, that is one of the largest contributors nationally, and this was a surprise to me. One of the largest contributors is the Department of Defense. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether our fire department uses Prussian foam. Okay. It wouldn't surprise me if the county used it. I understand that it is the used airport. regularly at airports. Yeah. Um, and I'm not aware of any local company that would be manufacturing or testing PFAS type chemicals within our watershed. Okay. Not to say that they they could be there. I just don't know. Mr. Chairman, to answer part of your question, I believe we do have we, we have it available. We don't necessarily use it regularly. Okay. Um, we just said it had to, and we don't use it at the large scale. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I believe there's a replacement now for it. Yeah. So I didn't know if there's something for us. If, there was, if there's a, if there's some kind of a fund or something to get rid of the stuff mm -hmm. that we have and replace it with the non PFAS stuff, I guess that's, that's a, a question. For, that's out of what I know. I, that's <laughs> that's a that, that, that's a fire, fire chief question. <laughs> so.
Okay, I guess uh, anybody else has any, any other comments or concerns? Can we uh, someone look for a motion? I move to adopt resolution. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay, number eight, resolution number 96, 24 resolution off directing staff to develop a complete streets policy to improve citizen accessibility and all forms of mobility within our community and to increase safe, comfortable, and conventional or convenient travel while promoting public health and sustainable environmental practices. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, yes, so tonight, we're asking this board, as well as the Common Council, to give us guidance in developing basically a complete streets policy for the city of Sheboygan. And what does that mean? So what it means is we're really looking to, when we do road projects within the city or transportation projects, we're really looking to become more holistic and not just what I would say is what we have been focused on, the automobile. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other modes of transportation, such as walkability, sidewalks, accessibility for, for handicap accessibility with programs that need to be installed, other modes of transportation, of bicycling, electric vehicles in the future. As things become more and more involved, we need to take more of a larger approach so, what this, what this policy does, and I, we, we've started a website already, kind of just some guiding principles. And, and once this gets approved through the board tonight, as well as Common Council, we're going to publish this live and get a lot of more input from the community. It's much more community driven in terms of really how do we want to have our community move people in traffic in the future. And I think the Indiana project is, is a prime example. We, we kind of use that as kind of a, what I would say is a, a, a demonstration or as a test project. If you notice, Indiana used to be, at one time, used to be four lanes. Now it's down to two. We've, we've, what we've called is we road diet. We've added a, a, a protected bike lane on one side, sidewalks on another, some terrace area for trees to be planted in the future, as well as some lighting to make it much more safer for everybody as well as calm the traffic in wider streets traffic tends to speed up S speeds the higher the speeds are the worse the accidents are so what this does is when we we, we have more of a like i said a process that's going to be centered around community driven pri priorities and values we also will have when we look at streets in in certain areas we'll have kind of some guidelines in terms of this is what we would recommend for street width given the amount of traffic, where the homes are, and, and so forth in terms of geometry. So it talks about that kind of process and, and what, what are the amenities that would be needed within, within this design. If you just want to kind of scroll up. So again, we, we want to create a safe and convenient, reliable, we also want to make sure that we're being affordable. To, we just can't say, oh, this is all we don't care what our costs are, because we want, we want to be good stewards of the taxpayers and the community's money, and ultimately accessible. And that's accessible either to race, ethnicity, religion, income, gender, immigration, all of those types of factors play into it in terms of access to vehicles, access to transit, bicycles, walking. So we talked about the streets. We know we have a vast network of infrastructure that is in place today. And it's mainly, again, been automobiles. However, we do have a great sidewalk network that's also aging. And I think you've heard from some of the other aldermen, what are we doing to address it? Part of the complete will, will factor that side of the equation. It just won't be a separate program that here we go, we're going to throw some money at sidewalks. It's going to be more taken into every project that we deal with. We have to focus on the sidewalks at the same time. We've already we've already done some initiative with the community this past summer 
Heather and some of our team, we had a couple of groups at the farmer's market acting, uh, asking the community to be involved in this process, sign up for newsletters. So we've already have quite a bit of people that have signed up that are interested in participating with this program. I think how many? We had um, over 150 people sign up the two farmers markets. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty good considering people don't like to hand out their email addresses too freely. <laughs> and we're not trying to spam or dunk them, it's yeah. just, you know, so we can communicate directly with those that are really active and want to participate in this. Bicycle infrastructure is, you know, it's, it's continuing to grow. And I think everyone is well aware e-bikes is becoming more and more prevalent. So how do we handle, you know, they, they, they travel a little bit faster speed. So how do we, so not only is this infrastructure based, there's a community information education outreach that is a huge component of making sure that we're all being good stewards of our transportation network and we all have to be good citizens as well as we're traveling. Uh, you know, the cell phones and distracted driving is probably one of the largest contributors to accidents nowadays. Um, one of the good things about the Complete Streets Initiative and policy, once we get it developed and get your approval to move forward, is we will be eligible for uh, more state federal funding. In fact, we just applied for a grant that's called Safe Streets for All. And a lot of the data that Heather is pulling up right now was a key factor in, in, in their application, as well as the development that you will be seeing in, 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 within this next year of our complete streets. So the left, the left, we call these our heat maps. So the brighter the spot, that's where the most activity is. And I think this is the, is this accident or speed? I believe this side is speeding. Okay. Right is access. Yes. Yeah. So clearly, 14th Street, Cal Calumet Drive, <laughs> Wider Street, no parking, four lanes, where are people speeding right through the heart of the city. So, not, not, and then the one on the right is last year's history of all the accidents and where they've occurred and kind of the hot spots oh, in the that? city. What's that? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, that's 10th in Georgia. Oh. Um, you know, my uncle got in an accident, yeah. car accident there. Yeah. I was like, bad, mm -hmm. bad one. Yep. I think, you know, people think it's a four way and it's not. Yeah. Uh, so, but a lot of this data also, and, and, and it's interesting, I think, if you want to, can you scroll? Yeah, uh, where do you want? To the next maps. I think what, what's interesting is, okay, these are the bike routes. We have them all mapped oh. as well, the bike racks. The one on the, on the right is the transit. But what's interesting is you get the low and in there. Mm -hmm. These are intersections with uh, traffic control, stop signs, four-way stops, the ones with signals. And with this is where, where we start talking about federal grants and state grants is where you see, and I'm going to stand up here, and just what's in, what's in the yellow is the high accident or high traffic and high accident corridors. And in the dark areas, those are areas that are are what we consider the census and it's the disadvantaged community. Those community that might not have the income uh, producing opportunity or, or have other disadvantages, either handicap accessibility and so forth. So, you know, it really bisects that sort of part of our community. Mm -hmm. So how do we solve that opportunity for them to travel safely across this area so that's part of the demonstration grant that we went for, for the Safe Streets for All. So we're in the holding, we got, a, we got an email back from the uh, gov.com <laughs> and uh, our application is being reviewed. They've already, some, they've already awarded 250 some grants nationwide already in the first phase. We're in the second phase because part of our grant request was not only just planning, we wanted to hopefully get maybe a demonstration. So sometimes what they'll do is they'll set up some temporary track calming or narrowing of streets or bike lanes mm. and try it for maybe a couple of weeks to get traffic used to it. Right away, it's all confusing. People kind of get upset, but then it calms down and then it sees, okay, how are tra how's traffic now starting to accommodate and, and adjust their behaviors? 
So that's part of this grant where it's a $250,000 grant where we're, we're excited because we have a lot of the factors that would uh, hopefully make us eligible. This all, again, feeds into our Complete Streets policy. Uh, so that's what we're asking. We're asking your support this evening to really give us guidance that Common Council supports this initiative. It, it makes sense for our community and you would like the staff then to develop a policy. Once we develop it and get it drafted, we're gonna have community input on it. We're gonna get it further refined. We're gonna bring it back to this board and the Common Council for final adoption, obviously. But in the meantime, we didn't wanna to get too far ahead of this without your backing or your input. I have some questions. Oh, I'm, first, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. I think this is a really good opportunity for us I think, to, to, to move forward with a lot of, you know, make some great changes to some of our infrastructure. I, 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 I look at what we did on Indiana Avenue and I, I, lo I love the way it works. It really does. It really, it's, it's a nice street now and it's, it's safe for, for everyone. And, and that's what, that's our goal. So, go right to Amanda. So when we're looking at, when we're applying for the grant, like what specific neighborhoods are we looking at? Like I know that you pulled up that this is like sort of a lower income area and maybe have some disadvantages and that's probably where most of our diverse community lives. I would worry about us like putting money towards, it is important for them to have a safe bike lane and sidewalks, but I would hate to like spend this money and then like then we gentrify the whole area. And then they have to like move because people are like, it's right here now and we all wanna live here. Now all these people who live in the flats I'll have to now try to figure out where to go. So I just want to be like thoughtful about like how we implement it. Like I also want to provide safety, but I don't want to like flip it upside on its head. I would agree. And it's a, it's a, that's a, that's a concern. Uh, we, we concentrated on when you overlay the high accident, the high speed, those corridors, like I said, it, it kind of bisects those areas that we've talked about, this, those disadvantaged communities. So we want to make it safer, but we're not making it so what I would say extravagant or anything that would flip it in terms of of being able to be unaffordable. In other words, yeah, we, we, want to, we, we want, want to we, we want to be and we want to make sure that that's not a negative associated with with the, with the end result. I would agree. Yeah. So how do we accomplish that? I think, again, that comes part of the community. How do we work together coming up with a, well, a design? How, how are you going to get that community to participate in your things? They're not, I mean, they're having a hard time getting to the farmer's market. So like, well, you'll have to make yourself available in their space. Exactly. The involvement that you need. And that's what we, we plan to actually do physical outreach within this neighborhood. Okay. And, and get I together. Want to I think the that. Erie Hill neighborhood has an association. Okay. We would re start with them and then ultimately try to even further ingrain ourselves and get out there and, and walk it and be part of the neighborhood as well. Physically, physically witness kind of the, some of the stuff that's going on that they witness every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do have one follow up. Is this in conjunction with the Smart Growth America, like this complete yep. street? Okay. Yep, exactly. In fact, we have a uh, I think there's a link on our right on our website that if you want to learn what is a complete streets. Great, right, that's what I'm. It, liter it, that's literally what I'm on right it now. Set, it, 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 it has okay. a hyperlink to it. Right. So we'll be able to sort of see what other they've done with other communities. I mean, they're saying some big names, right? Like Tennessee and Nashville, and like all these. Like I don't want to. Nashville, the north. I don't want to. I don't want to mimic yeah, them. I want us to be like what West fits your boy your best. Now. Yeah. You know, I don't want to become national because you can't afford anything there anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'll, 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 I'll give you a, a, one of one of the communities that in Wisconsin. Oh, West Allen. Yeah. Okay. They have a and they have a really they're they're very comparable, very comparable to Sheboygan. Cool. And uh, urbanized area. Mm -hmm. uh, type, you know, it's it's got some older industrial areas. They have a really nice uh, plan and program that we've been kind of it's it's local. It's our size. We've been kind of uh, going back and forth with them for idea sharing and, and have they implemented some of these plans yet yes they have so we could like see them so that's doing our reports yeah yeah they actually have a report that they've that they're working on awesome cool you guys are on it thank you <laughs> okay Joe. okay thank you um okay great idea so 
uh, we have complete streets. Is there ever, is there gonna be a time where someone's gonna say within the community, hey, when's that program getting to my part of town? You know, <laughs> yeah. or oh, yeah. how do we how do we prioritize it? And how do we let those people that are thinking about this and see the advantage of having this? You're saying, hey, what is it, uh, 23rd, can I get that? You know, is, is that gonna be projected out as to where when you, get this finalized and you know, you're interacting with, with the community and they say, you know something, this is how we're going to arrange it. Because just like doing the road, road resurfacing, we all have priorities. Every district's got to be done. Right. So is that consistent with that? It will be. And that's how we're, there's going to be a lot. It's going to be data driven. So there's, you know, pavement condition, age, where are we at? What's the, what's the infrastructure? Where Where is it in terms of the accidents and, and other other factors that would prioritize this project over a different area. Okay. So yeah, it, it, it there'll be a plan. We're going to hopefully once we get the policy in place, that policy then will apply to our capital plan that we have for our street improvements. And then through that, how do we then build these new facts into those capital projects? Broadway and yeah. beautiful street. Was this, was there anything that can co coincide with this program that happened on Broadway? Uh, I think we did. We did, all the, did all we narrow it up a little bit? We narrowed it up a little yes. bit. All every every intersection, eighty eight. Yes. Okay. Eighty eight cents the ball. They were bounced out at the intersection of twelfth and uh, hit the bump out at twelfth and um, Broadway. And, yeah. Because then of, of all the streets up that 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 every intersection is heavy heavy pedestrian. Right. The whole stretch that's the heaviest the pedestrian. Okay. Twelfth Street. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Plus, one thing that drives us too is utility work. You know, if the utilities are shot in a road, right. yeah. and Broad, Broadway kind of fell under that. Besides, besides the road deep work, oh, yeah. there was some major utility work that needed to be done. Drive right. now, yeah. yeah, and plus we work at the water utility quite a bit, especially a lot of this lead service stuff. Yeah, so we all work together as a team. That kind of dictates a little bit too. <clears throat> Either comments, questions. I'm in full support. Yep. Okay. If you're Tired. doing things with data yeah. and Making it being thoughtful about it, I'm I'm in I'm full support of this. It's very exciting. With that full support, would you like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. <laughs> okay. I'll second it. Right? Okay. Whoa. Oh, I'll second it. <laughs> uh, any other discussion on it? All those in favor? Oh, we have a. Do you, oh. do you take public input at this point, or or do you want to yeah. finish this? Or then? Um, I, I could take. Sure we, we, we could take a little if you want. I, I just wanted to to thank you for um for this action because i've seen this in community that i've lived in before i'm a pretty new district board gonna be here a couple of years and it really can make a huge difference and uh, uh, in the little uh, uh, just the day-to-day -day, uh, transportation for people so and i'm an avid cyclist so uh it also helps us out to be a little safer I've talked to a lot of people in the community about cycling and why they don't, mm -hmm. and it's because they don't feel safe. It's the number one reason why people stay to me. Yeah. I just don't feel safe on the street, and they don't want to ride on the sidewalk for whatever reason. Sometimes you can't, but but providing um, well-designed infrastructure for for everyone is is uh, really. A, uh, I commend you for for taking this action. Well, thank you for your comments. With that, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. All right. Next meeting date is December 12, 2023. Looking for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Aye. aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.